So in continuing with our discussion on NN, I can just once again want to, I also once again want to stress this point that uh, you have to apply the neural networks where they are really needed and uh, the problem should be such that uh, the application of neural network should be justified and uh, there are no, you know, satisfactory solutions by the traditional techniques. Uh, for example, uh, one work uh, uh, done by one um, researcher uh, is like this, that uh, ISRO collects a lot of data on satellites like Topex, CSAT, etc. Now, uh, the, when they, they collect the uh, satellite data in such a way that the satellites revolves and come to this, comes to the same station after every uh, 10 days or 11 days and like that. And like that, there are so many uh, repetitious paths that are there. Now, uh, the values that are sensed by satellites are reported in such a way that yes, they are, suppose this is a path of a satellite uh, or a track of satellite, then at every certain distance like one, uh, one degree by one degree or so, the values that are sensed are averaged out in both time as well as space domain and then they are reported. Now, a problem comes when uh, you are interested in only some spe station specific value, especially at a coastal station because the reporting at uh, locations which are very near the coast uh, is something uh, always suffering from some flaw because there are very few observations when the satellites go near the uh, coastline. So the coast, near coast data are not reliable. Therefore, we wanted to devise a method by which we can uh, translate these deep water data of wave height, wave period, wind speed to some shallow water location. Now, traditionally, this is done by uh, uh, this numerical methods, but numerical methods have their own problem, uh, not only apart from complexity of the numerical scheme, but they have modeling difficulties. There are also certain numerical constraints, especially when we go to the near shore data. Therefore, we thought to provide a technical, uh, to an alternative to the existing one, to neural networks, and to project the deep water uh, data to shallow water. Now, uh, so we had this data collected by satellite Topex of wind speed, uh, wave uh, height, wave uh, period. Uh, we also had for calibration purpose the data collected by instrument called Wearer Boy uh, at these uh, locations for four years. Uh, then we developed a neural network wherein the input was the data of uh, wave height, wave period, wind speed at these locations, several locations, and the output was the resulting wave height at a shallow water location. Uh, so this, this way, first of all, we saw uh, whether the projection of one parameter alone is uh, sufficient. For example, we will take the data at let us say about 21 stations separated by one degree and project it to the required uh, coastal location SW3 near uh, Ratnagiri. And uh, second time we developed a full network wherein we projected all the data collected at these locations and obtained the uh, outcome of wave height, wave period and wind speed at the shallow water location. And we find that, uh, you know, this network which brings in a lot of flexibility by virtue of larger size was necessary and this uh, proves to be better. Now, we also separated the data as per monsoon and non-monsoon uh, considering the variability in the uh, statistical parameters in these two uh, space, uh, uh, spatial component, uh, temporal components. And we found that if we do this pre-processing, the results improve. So this shows how far the output of wave height, wave period and wind speed during monsoon se uh, non-monsoon season uh, resembles the actual observed values in terms of correlation coefficient, mean absolute error and root mean square error. And uh, this shows again the comparison between the uh, time series comparison, corresponding scatter plot uh, in which we have compared the observed significant wave height with the network derived, the observed uh, wave period with the network derived period and the observed wind speed with the network uh, derived wind speed. And we found that uh, the choice of appropriate uh, network uh, gives you the correct values. Um, now the point that I want to stress out of this presenting the studies like this 
this uh, that uh, uh, this study showed how the wind speed and periods along with wave heights sensed by satellite in deep region can be used to derive their transformed values over a specified coastal region using ANN. Now we found that if we incorporate statistical homogeneity in the measured values in training, then it can efficiently tackle the highly random variations of input in that way. Although uh, pre-processing is not a precondition, uh, pre then uh, 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 then, the, we also found that the larger the difference uh, between the such statistical <laughs> variations in between two uh, data sets, monsoon and non-monsoon, the better is the gain in the accuracy compared with the unsegregated learning. And uh, most of the earlier studies, they could not uh, translate the wind speed properly. They used to get very high errors when they wanted to translate the wind speed. But in this study, by proper choice of uh, uh, input-output scheme and by proper choice of uh, Mm, uh, parameters, uh, control network control parameters, we were able to get very good accurate results for wind speed also. Now, the importance of the study is like this, that uh, we require instrumental data at both at the uh, target location only for calibrating the network. After that calibration is done, you can take out that instrument, deploy it elsewhere, because collection of the instrument, uh, instrumental data is indeed very, very costly. So, by developing a technique, we allowed the uh, data collection agency namely ISRO to collect data for these uh, locations of interest only for a small time and use that instrument sub at subsequent place uh, so that they can save a lot of uh, money, time and effort in collecting data at many locations. So like that there are uh, several advantages of uh, using the technique of uh, neural network. Now so in the end therefore. <coughs> In the end, therefore, that I wanted to stress that uh, to summarize what we have uh, seen just now, we have to know that we have to apply the technique of neural networks only in the cases where its application is justified. The problem should be really such that it is indeed very complex. And secondly, the available traditional methods do not give an, a very satisfactory kind of answer. In that case, only you have to see application of neural networks. Even in that case, first you try to apply the existing uh, methods and see what level of accuracy you get. Then you apply and then see whether there is a substantial increase. Now sometimes people, ha I found people have a tendency, especially the young researchers, that using the traditional uh, say numerical methods or statistical technique, I get let's say correlation coefficient of uh, in between the observation and the estimated value, something like 0.8 and by using ANN, I get 0.83. So that difference is quite marginal. It is not uh, the, that for the small difference you use this uh, neural network. Nobody will accept uh, the neural net, your neural network formulation because you give them a very small improvement with the existing. But if the existing um, uh, um, statistical um, performance criteria differ much, much than the uh, 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 neural network based criteria, then people will accept uh, your result. Secondly, you just don't stop by giving the network you ensure that it works in practice, carry out the parametric studies and see whether it really resembles the physical process or not. If not, you have to try some alternative network architectures, training schemes and uh, training forms. And also when you do parametric studies, there is also a scope to understand the physics in a, uh, in, in a alternative way or in a better way. Then uh, this discover the new parametric relations if possible using ANN that can also be done. Another thing is that always try to decipher the black box nature of the network as uh, we have seen. And uh, finally, we have to see that uh, uh, at like any at, in any other disciplines, in our discipline of water also people are now advocating use of hybrid models in place of the ordinary uh, single type of modeling.